I'll start it right at 10. I can count it down. All right. Hi folks, I'm Bob Moore, Bob's Red Mill Natural Foods. Today I'm here with our Bob's Red Mill chef, Sarah Hobbs. Hi, Bob. I'm so excited to be here with you to talk about one of my favorite topics, holiday cooking. And what a timely topic it is, Sarah. The holidays are right around the corner, and one of the best things about this season is all of the delicious food. I agree, Bob. Thanksgiving just wouldn't be the same without pie and stuffing, right? Right, and that is so true. But Sarah, you and I both know that this season can be very challenging for our friends on a gluten-free diet. Yes, yes. Indeed. Eating gluten-free foods is an absolute necessity for people with celiac disease or gluten intolerance. But no one wants to miss out on tasty treats like pumpkin pie or gingerbread cookies. You are right. Nowadays, so many people are on a gluten-free diet or they have friends or family who are, and you don't want anyone to feel left out of the holiday celebration. What a great point. And especially if they have children who must eat gluten-free. You want to make sure they feel included in the festivities. Absolutely. Now, making homemade gluten-free foods may seem tricky, but with the right ingredients and just a little bit of know-how, it is no problem at all. And in fact, I've prepared a few of my favorite holiday dishes to show you just how easy it can be. Sarah, that is just wonderful. Why don't you tell us about what we have here? Sure. So we just recently came out with our brand new gluten-free one-to-one flour. It is a blend of rice flours, sorghum flour, tapioca, and potato starch. And the great thing about this flour is that it has the xanthan gum included. So all you need to do is follow your favorite recipe, and you just swap the wheat flour for our new gluten-free one-to-one flour. Perhaps I should take a moment and tell you what the gluten or the uh, xanthan gum does. I think that is a great idea. Well, uh, in wheat, we have gluten, and the gluten allows the yeast to rise. And we miss that when we don't have uh, wheat in our ingredients. And, and so for people with celiac disease, they just simply can't handle that. So we find xanthan gum, a natural function. It's a growth that's, uh, that's harvested. And we have xanthan gum that we add, and it replaces the gluten so that you get that same rising ability when you add yeast or whatever you have to add to it to make it rise. And so it really is a great substitute or folks that have a celiac or just want to be on a gluten-free diet. That is right. And you can make a lot of great things with this gluten-free one-to-one flour. The first thing I made were the holiday traditional favorite, some gingerbread men. Uh, and I just took a recipe from our trusted friends over at Cook's Illustrated. And all I did was I swapped out the wheat flour for our gluten-free one-to-one flour, and they turned out pretty good, didn't they? Yep. This is um, an easy recipe to make. <laughs> you sure are. Poor little guy. Uh, totally easy recipe to make, and it's really great for the kids. They can help cut out the shapes. I mean, you don't have to do gingerbread men. You could just do squares, circles, you know, any sort of cookie cutter, and they'll also be able to help you decorate them. And they're good. They and they really are, are really tasty. good. They taste awesome. like, a, like gingerbread cookie. Um, super easy to make, and you could also make these egg and dairy-free. All you need to do is use some vegan margarine and some almond milk in place. And the second cookie I made using our gluten-free one-to-one flour are these holiday tea cookies. They are also made with our hazelnut flour, and this hazelnuts in this flour actually come from here in Oregon. You can drive just a few miles from here and yeah. see acres and acres of just drive to the west hazelnut trees, and most of the world's hazelnuts come yeah. from just within a few miles of where we are right now in yeah. Portland, Oregon. So that it's a delicious flour, it's local, and it's fresh. Uh, these are super easy to make. You make it in your food processor. You can make the dough the day before, chill it overnight, bake them off the next day. And the kids can also help with these because you get to roll in a bunch of powdered sugar. Well, I, is that? I saw this coming when we did a little practice run here. So I brought an assistant. I brought Nancy who is my assistant. Come on over here, Joe. <laughs> this is Nancy Garner. She's my hi, everyday hi, assistant. Hi, oh, hi. And my, your job today 
is to take a hold of those. You know, you're gonna, it's going to get all. I know it. I know. It. <laughs> I brought you here just for this, so you're going to show us how good these are. Come on, kiddo. Okay. I hope you can see this. Look at all that dust. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> half, just half now. Okay. All right. Oh, well done. Did, mm. did okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Isn't that good? Well, you have to eat the whole thing. So, <laughs> well, let me have the other half. Okay. Oh. And look, you guys are clean on. I'm trying to get it on me. <laughs> Those are great. Those are great. Thank you. Those are Glad really you like good. Them. And they're, they're super easy good. to make. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> They all look I am just surrounded with talent. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're I welcome. may call you again now. <laughs> nope. What a terrible job what to a be privilege. the taster. If you are a little bit pinched for time, we do have some great gluten-free mixes that you can use. One of them is our gluten-free brownie mix. Oh, yes. Um, easy to make. There's a simple recipe on the bag, but I decided to make them a little bit more festive by adding just about a quarter of a teaspoon of peppermint extract to the batter, and then made a simple cream cheese frosting on top, cover it with some crushed peppermint pieces. I just bought some candy canes and mashed those up. But the uh, the recipe for this basic is right here. Isn't that wonderful? That is the basic recipe right there, yep. And all you need to do is just add a quarter teaspoon of peppermint extract, and you have peppermint brownies. Even I could do that. They're delicious, they're easy to make, and they're a great thing to bring to your holiday Christmas party. Thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. Now. If you're kind of tired of sweets and you want something a little bit more on the savory side, we have our gluten-free cornbread mix. Oh. You can make it the traditional way in a nice pan or a cast iron, something that you can pass around the table to everyone. Um, and it's made with some stone grain gluten-free cornmeal. Well, let me tell you just a little bit about where this corn comes from. All right. This is the most wonderful corn. It is uh, full whole grain. When we put it into our stone mills and slowly turn them, we get this delightful cornmeal out that has the germ in it. Our cornmeal is not degerminated, and we get the wonderful endosperm and the fiber. So these are whole grain, and all of our cornmeal and the cornmeal that's in our cornmeal uh, muffin mix is all whole grain. So. And remember how you were asking me about if you have, you know, grandma's famous cornbread. Oh, recipe. yeah. You know, what can you do about making that gluten-free? Well, the easy thing is to use some of our gluten-free one-to-one -one flour. And then to also pick up a bag of some of our gluten-free cornmeal, and you're set. Awesome. I better tie this. Don't you Go think I should try Yeah, this? I think you should. Oh, I can pull the top right yeah. off of that. Yeah. <laughs> now they're, you know, they're not fresh out of the oven anymore, mm. but they're still going to taste good. Mm. And I like to make these into muffins because it's a great alternative to having wheat dinner rolls. Someone, you know, each person can have their own little roll. You don't mm. have to be fighting over what's left over in the pan. Mm, and also, so they are a great base for gluten-free cornbread stuffing. Um, make it a few days before and let it dry out or make it fresh and just toast it a little bit in the oven. So those are just a few ideas of how you can make your holiday favorites gluten-free with Bob's Red Mill gluten-free flours and baking mixes. I'm very impressed. Thank you. And we have many terrific seasonal recipes on our website, bobsredmill.com. Thanks, Sarah. Now, are you ready to answer some questions from our viewers? Sure. Okay. All right. Jana H. Jana H. asks, how does our new gluten-free one-to-one baking flour differ from your gluten-free all-purpose flour, from our, or really from Bob's Red Mill, yes. uh, gluten-free all-purpose flour. Right. Well, they're both great alternatives for wheat baking if you're needing to go gluten-free. Our one-to-one -one already has the xanthan gum included, and it is designed more for your treats, for, you know, cookies, cakes, pancakes, muffins, all sorts of sweets that you like to have around the house around holiday time. Our gluten-free all-purpose like, flour. Like headless. Uh, like headless gingerbread men. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of those around your house. Yeah, holidays, I know, I know. Huh? And now they're armless, armless too. Oh, dear. Um, our gluten-free all-purpose flour uh, is made with bean flours. And those are very high in protein. So our gluten-free all-purpose flour is perfect for any sort of gluten-free bread baking you need to do. You will need to add the xanthan gum, but that's great because you can alter it and add just what you need. Um, and it also, uh, our gluten-free one-to-one is great for anything that needs baking powder or baking soda. Wonderful. All right. Are you ready for your question? I am. All right. Chelsea M asks, 
What inspired you to start producing gluten-free products? Ah, well, about 25 years ago, I was approached by the GIG, Gluten Intolerance Group of Seattle, Washington, and they asked me if I would begin some process of separating our gluten products from our non-gluten, rice and, and corn and things like that. And I made a, a, an effort in the beginning, but it wasn't until we moved into our our last facility and certainly this one that we had a separate milling and separate uh, rooms and all. Here we have a separate, a total separate building that is air, the air is kept separate from anything else and we do our testing, we have a wonderful lab. So when it says gluten-free, we know it's gluten-free. So we've had this gluten-free lab for quite a long time. Oh yes, we? uh, yeah. we've been truly into gluten-free for over 20 years. Nice, that is reassuring for Thanks. sure. Hmm. Sandra D asks us, do you have recommendations on how to adapt our current recipes to use Bob's Red Mill gluten-free, one-to-one baking flour, or can we just use it without changing our recipes? Well, that is the great thing about this gluten-free one-to-one flour, and just like these two cookies that I made, change your flour, but not your recipe. The xanthan gum is included in the one-to-one, -one, so you don't have to make any switches at all. Oh, Take well. out, the, out the wheat flour, use this in its place. And you can use this for anything you like, cookies, cakes, muffins, quick breads, brownies, bars. It's fabulous. I'm wonderful. I can't believe some of these things. All right, your next question. And <laughs> this will be a nice long answer. How did Bob's Red Mill get started and what year was it? Oh my like? goodness, Sarah. Well, people ask me that a lot. I get stopped on the street and I get stopped in the mill. We give tours here in the mill if you're here in the Portland area. And that's the first question, of course, everyone wants to know, well, how did you get started? Basically, we started our first mill in 1972. And uh, so that's been 42 years I've been doing this. And another question people say, well, if you had it to do over, what would you change? And I say, well, I changed. I would have started a lot earlier. I love what I do. This whole thing, the whole grains, the wonderful people, we have almost 400 folks here. We're actually running 24 hours a day to make all this product, just to keep up with you. So thank you for that. And uh, my first beginning was uh, reading a book called John Goffey's Mill. I don't know whether that's it's out of print now, but it was such a wonderful book. Well, you have a few copies. Well, I do have. I had Nancy uh, go on the website and try to gather, gather together some old copies, and I have several of them here. But anyway, the uh, John Goffey, the mill, was uh, a, a destitute mill, and a uh, fellow, the author of the book, George Woodbury, uh, got it going, and that so inspired me. But what did it inspire me with? I can tell you this. I finished reading the book. George Woodbury knew nothing about milling. He knew nothing about mills. He knew nothing about selling. He was an archaeologist. And when he got all through, he had a mill that people loved to come to. They loved his cornmeal and his whole wheat flour. And I read this book and I thought, if this guy can do that with no knowledge, so can I. And I started, basically, I found an old mill and started the millstones and stuff with my two of my three sons. They're still working at it. And we here have just enjoyed every minute. We have 22 mills running 24 hours a day now. Wow. That's so, a lot of mills. And... Uh, we, we actually, our interruption was when we had been in business for 10 years, we had a, a, a fire, the mill burned down. So I was going to quit. What year was that? 1988. I was 60 years old, believe it or not. I'm 85 now. Don't, I was eight. Don't, <laughs> don't believe that. I am, really, 85. But my people wanted to stay with me, and we had yeah, a wonderful programs here and uh, for, for help and for our for employees. So I, my wife and I decided we'd give a try and are good to us. They were patient with us. And within three or four months, we were back running again in a new location, much bigger than the one that had a sprinkler system. That was very good important. Call. Call. We did not have a sprinkler system <laughs> in the old mill. So uh, the uh, some of the changes that have taken place besides you just super gross. We're in 80 countries now, all, basically all over the world and all over the United States. I'm just so absolutely thrilled at the success of whole grains. I, I don't take a lot of credit except that I can make it available for you, and it's been fun doing it. Well, and I remember you saying that your wife, Charlie, was a big inspiration to you in oh, whole grains. Yeah, she was. Her grandmother inspired her to 
make whole grain breads back, oh, this was in the 50s, Sarah. And uh, so we enjoyed all these wonderful whole grains. And it wasn't until I read John Goffey's mill that I was able to put the grain thing into perspective and make, make it myself. And so this has been a wonderful work of love all these many, many years. And uh, so, but I'm getting older. I said I was 85. Don't and uh, some 10 years ago, uh, I thought to myself, you know, I need to do something with this business. And I didn't want to sell it. So I gave it away. That's right. You're you part of the it's ownership. A, yeah, it's all uh, of and, us. And Nancy is part of the ownership. So we have here we, at Bob's Red Mill, we have an ESOP, employee stock ownership plan. And honestly, they're all gathering every year. They get a stock certificate mm -hmm. and they own a little more and more. And uh, it's been a wonderful thing. So it, I, I've had a great experience in life. It's a great story. I love hearing it. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Do you have a question for me now? Are there any new products that we're working on that are coming out in the future? There are. We just came out with a, a revamped line of sweeteners. We have three brand new sugars. Oh, there we go. Yes. They're right over here. Yeah. Yeah. The most exciting. Exciting one is probably our organic coconut sugar. This is a great alternative to people who are trying to stay away from any sort of refined or unnatural sugars. Uh, this is is made from the nectar of coconut flowers. It has a very very similar taste to regular cane sugar. Um, you don't need to use any extra to get enough sweetness in your baked goods. It's a great alternative for people who are maybe on the paleo diet. Um, isn't there another, uh, Nancy's husband, Mickey, is uh, kind of borderline diabetic, and he, he's just... Yes, that's right. It, it is great for... It's, what What's the uh, aspect of this that uh, Mickey likes? Um, it's it's not refined. Oh, yeah, it's not refined. It has no, there's a word. great flavor. Glycemic index? What? Glycemic index. Glycemic index, yeah. Or? See how much yep. I know about it. <laughs> Uh, I know it's other, true, though. The two other new sugars we have are uh, a sparkling sugar, which is excellent for uh, any sort of decor. Put it on top of your cookies. It's going to give it a nice, sparkly, crusty, sugary crunch on top. Uh, we also have date sugar. That is just milled straight from, or great ground straight from, from dates. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Yeah. Premium quality. Deglet dates. Yes, it has an excellent, mildly sweet flavor. We also have a new turbinado, which is nice to use in baking, or you can also use it as a decor sugar as well. Um, and if you want to find out about new Bob's Red Mill products, you can follow us on our Facebook page, or you can also sign up uh, to follow us by our email newsletter. And you can do that by visiting our website, bobsredmill.com. Thank you. All right. What, uh, Bing Y asks us, what are the major benefits of your products? Hmm. <laughs> There's so many. Well, I, <laughs> Where are you are ready to for another two hours. <laughs> High fiber is the, 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 the great uh, absence in our society for the last 125 years has mm -hmm. been fiber and the germ in the oils. When we mill rice, we take the bran away, the germ away, right. and uh, the, the, the amount of, of nutrition that's lacking uh, is, is just legend and it's been going on for 150 years. The same thing is true corn. They all mostly, most corns except ours are degerminated. You need that, uh, pro those products. Your body needs those things for your, for health. The other thing is wheat. We mill wheat, make it white. And it's, it's a terrible thing to do. Well, we don't mill no, it. No, we don't. Right? I, uh, we mill it and we keep it whole grain. Anyway, the whole grain is such a great, uh, the soluble fiber in the whole grains and oats and flaxseed meal is uh, a, a prebiotic. And it helps the beneficial bacteria in your gut thrive. All of this is missing in when you don't have whole grains. And we, we just feel that people who transition their diets to whole grain are so much better off yeah. and we certainly feel that way about ourselves and our own family so well and don't our stone mills kind of give us a better product also they don't get quite as hot right no actually there's no heat at all yeah. attached so you can the, the, the grain is at room temperature and the flour comes out if we put a hundred pounds of grain whatever the grain is the mill and it comes out nice and cool and we get a hundred pounds. pounds we don't add right. anything and we don't take anything away right. so it's, it's, this has been a wonderful, wonderful business. So I, I, I just love it. 
Uh, Melinda W. asks, where can I find our products? Well, that's my, my, that's my question. That is. I can answer it if you want. But Sarah's going to answer it for oh, okay. you. <laughs> we got twisted on that question. Well, our products are available all over the U.S. and, in fact, all over the world. You can find Bob's Red Mill in natural food stores, club stores, and supermarkets across the United States and in over almost 80 countries around the world. I'll take yours. Okay, you can take And you can also shop online at Amazon, Vitacost, or our website, bobsredmill.com. Well, Sarah, thanks for all the time. You're welcome. Thanks. What are there, pal? <laughs> We've but, got more time. All right, so well, why don't we talk a little bit about our gluten-free pie crust mix. Awesome. And we have a bag of it right here. Good. I guess we're not going to be saying goodbye right now. We won't say goodbye yet. Are you ready to go? <laughs> no, I just forever. We came out with this gluten-free pie crust mix about a year ago. Thank you. Um, you can use it to make any sort of sweet or savory pie. Super easy to do, and it's almost like making, well, it is just like making your regular wheat pie crust at home, except we've gone through the trouble to figure out the right ratios of flours and starches and xanthan gum, very similar to our one-to-one -one flour. You just add your fat. You can use butter, shortening, coconut oil, whichever you prefer. Cut that fat in, chill it. A few hours later, roll it out and make your pie, and you're done. Um, great for sweet pies. Great for the holidays. You can make pecan pie. You can make pumpkin pie, apple pie, and you could even go savory route. Um, mm. You know, pot pies. It's a great crust for a pot pie. Savory little hand pies, things you can take with you, you know, for lunch or maybe to a holiday party and you don't want to have to have people fighting over the last piece of pie. You can make little individual ones instead. <laughs> We're so blessed here. Sarah, is, this is a kitchen we're in. It's a very complete kitchen. We need to pan it for you, but it's a lovely kitchen, and it was all done with her design in mind. And Both Sarah, of our Well, I suppose. I paid for it. You did. <laughs> <laughs> but we have these wonderful the wonderful pleasure of having Sarah do these things all the time for us. We're always, I'm always popping into the kitchen to see what she's got yes, you are. new. And she's had a hand in developing a lot of these recipes. Yeah, Thank it's, you, oh, it's my pleasure. Yeah. It is so much fun to be able to take, especially working on the gluten-free items, to take something that most people are afraid of, they see it as a challenge, and to get in here and kind of work out a way to make it a fail-safe. Well, I feel like all this is a challenge, but when I walk in here and I see how adept you are at all this wonderful stuff, I guess it's true. You don't see how many times I throw uh, something away. I, don't even have I throw to things worry away about it. before I bring it out to everybody else. Uh, so, do you have any favorite holiday treats? Well, I think any of the pies. You know, I just love apple pie and, and whatnot. And, uh, yeah. I, I think that's probably be oh, oh yeah with ice cream on top. Nice. Well, you can put ice cream on anything. It's yeah, really I know. Good. Can but you uh, could you make the pie crust? Don't we have a a, a pie crust? Yeah, yes, we, we have do. a gluten-free pie crust. So there we have that. And you know, if you have a pie crust recipe that you're really comfortable with making, and you're going on a gluten-free diet, or you have a gluten-free guest coming, you can use also use our our one-to-one -one flour. You know, I know some people are really married to their own special family pie crust recipe. So again, the one-to-one -one flour is a great option. For us, for a substitute for folks yeah. who are trying to be gluten-free. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, my favorite Christmas holiday treat is a Finnish bread that my mom's family makes. Mm. My mom's family is from Finland. Ah. And it's called Puglia. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. But it's a braided yeast bread, pretty similar to Hala, but you flavor it with cardamom instead. And then you crush a bunch of sugar cubes, or you could use our sparkling sugar, oh. sprinkle that on top, and then you glaze it with coffee. It's amazing. Oh, it I sounds it. awesome. And we make Sarah. it every year. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, I don't make it any other time of the year because I save it special. Oh, purposes. yeah. That's wonderful. Well, uh, can, well, the question has been asked can people visit the mill? If there's anything that I've tried to do for you guys, is make it possible for you to see what we do here. We give tours every weekday. So if you're in Portland uh, or plan on being in Portland, as long as you're here on a weekday, you can come by the mill at 10 o'clock. The doors are open. You're welcome to come in, bring your kids. It uh, takes about an hour, and we have a, a historic part of the thing. And we also have large windows all the way across, so and you can, can see, see our gluten-free, and you can see yeah. the, the mills, you can see the packaging. 
and it's it's a wonderful pleasure to see where these products are made right here at Bob's Red Mill. So we're, we love. Um, and you get to leave with some free samples. Oh yeah. And we have a really great little gift shop that just opened up where you can buy Bob's Red Mill T-shirts and cookbooks and aprons and all sorts of Bob's Red Mill things. And our uh, tour guides are very good at yes, giving tours are. as well as and then. We're not, we don't want to forget Sarah. We don't want to forget our wonderful whole grain store. Well, you know, you show for the tour at 10. It takes about an hour. Right. What are you going to want to do? We want lunch. That's right. And so we Where can are you serve lunch. Go? Whole grains. <laughs> we have a wonderful whole grain store. So, you know, all of you can look this up on the website if you don't already know about us. And uh, you can get a wonderful picture of our whole grain store. And uh, uh, it's... Uh, our whole grain store is great. I mean, not only does it have every single Bob's Red Mill product. Every size. Every too. size and a bo nice bulk section. But we also have a restaurant. So we have we serve both lunch and dinner six and days breakfast. a week and breakfast. So breakfast, lunch and dinner six days a week. You can get your whole grain meal on any day of the week. Oh, Bob, what do you eat for breakfast? Well, this morning I had uh, thick oats. I, I keep bouncing around with 10 grain cereal and six grain cereal mm -hmm. and uh, steel cut oats and Scottish oatmeal. These are just my favorites. But I have to admit that I take uh, a large bowl of, of uh, thick oats and I, I cut a banana, a slice of banana, I like that. And I put sugar in it. Uh, and uh, Maybe some of our coconut sugar or our Well, sugar. I've been using this uh, Golden, uh, the, 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 Arcane sugar? Yeah, that's uh, this, this actually. Uh, this one right here? Lately, I've been using the sparkling sugar. Oh, the sparkling it's sugar. It's got such yeah. a neat. Uh, but it's just so good for you. I use uh, skim milk and uh, and a cup of coffee. And uh, that's that's a wonderful breakfast. Yeah. It, it, it holds. What it does is it brings your blood sugar level up slowly. It's not like even eggs and stuff, which give you a good pop. And uh, oh, I've, I've been told on the side over here that I don't forget flax because I pour <laughs> flax meal on it, flax oh, seed meal, right. which is so good. Meal. My, my yeah. cholesterol stays about 121, and I know it has something to do with all that wonderful uh, flax that well, I. Well, you were saying though something about what the oatmeal does to your blood sugar. Well, so it, it, it decreases it or it increases it slowly. Yeah. So you don't get that sugar. It takes rash. almost till noon for you to digest. Uh, the flat, the, uh, the the thick oats. Well, any of the oats, any of the whole grains, and, uh, and including Scottish oatmeal, which is a, my one of my favorites. Now, also. you brought the idea of Scottish oatmeal to Bob's Red Mill, right? Well, I I discovered one of the very first things that Charlie and I did was travel to Europe to see old mills. They really save a lot of them over there. Well, the first time we were there, we visited ten. And uh, I went to the historical society, got a list of them, and we ranged our. Uh, we were there all five, over five weeks. No, just all over uh, England and Scotland. And, Scotland. Wow. and in, nice. in Scotland, in the border country, we found the Preston Mill. And guess what? They were making oatmeal on a stone mill. Now, most oatmeal is rolled, and they have uh, uh, rolls that uh, roll the oat. Right. But these were being ground, and uh, they were so wonderful to me. They. They took the stone off and turned it over and let me see how they had sharpened the stone so it wouldn't make flour out of the oat. It would make a cereal. And I, I took etchings from it and took pictures of it. I came back here and that was about 1981. So since then, whatever that is, 30 years almost, uh, we've been making Scottish oatmeal because I have a sep we have separate mills that do just Scottish oatmeal. And it's one of my favorites, and I bet it's one of yours too if you try it. So, so you just took the etchings from the and some photographs and were able to replicate those I stones did that. here. That's I amazing! Did. Wow! Very I've taught cool. uh, stone mill sharpening around here to all my maintenance people. I feel like that should be a class that we offer. Well, well <laughs> I'm not sure I want all of you out there doing this. Oh, okay, you're right. Let me do it. Idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think another one of the next logical things was for folks to come to us and want to know why we couldn't have gluten-free oats. Well, part of the reason that we didn't originally have gluten-free oats is the farmers that grow oats will grow wheat and uh, mm -hmm. and their storage tanks and stuff. So it, it became necessary to contact um, 
we have about 8,000 acres in Saskatchewan and Canada. And all these farmers are totally dedicated to just growing oats, nothing else. And their oats test 100% gluten-free year in and year out. And from those, we make our gluten-free oat products as well as our oat gluten-free uh, Scottish show. So we have we have a wonderful uh, chain of uh, supply that uh, keeps us uh, keeps us making products that are very yeah. Wonderful. And because of that chain, we're able to have a very extensive line of gluten-free oat products. Absolutely. We have uh, steel cut oats, thick rolled oats, regular oat bran, even oat flour, and thick oats, and thick oats which yeah, are my favorite that. indeed. Yeah. All right. Well, more uh, breakfast uh, ideas, gluten-free breakfast ideas. Yeah. Some oh, of those. That's I am full. Of, of, yeah, if it's about food, food, I'm going to have an idea. Yeah. Um, we have a gluten-free pancake mix. So, you know, what are you going to feed these friends and family that are staying the night for Thanksgiving or especially Christmas? And, oh, man, Christmas morning with the kids. That's going to be hectic. You can just whip up a batch of our gluten-free pancakes and you can whip them up as is because they're delicious. They're like a buttermilk pancake, but you can also get a little bit fancy if you want to. You could throw some apples and spices in there. You could do like a gingerbread style of pancake, add some of those spices, maybe make some cream cheese frosting or at least some whipped cream to go on top. Um, you could take the more savory route, maybe throw some cheese in there. There's a lot of things that you can do with the pancake mix. Um, our gluten-free cornbread mix would be an excellent way to make some easy muffins that you could just have there around the Christmas tree or the next morning at the Thanksgiving, the post-Thanksgiving breakfast table. People want to eat a little bit light. You have those left over from the day before. And don't forget your gingerbread cookies. And you, Sarah, those are ginger, so good, as you can see. I know. I, I did snack on them a little bit <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> That's such a good. Them. That is the best recipe. Um, Gluten-free cinnamon rolls would be a nice option to have. Those would be warm and gooey right out of the oven. And, you know, you can use either one of our one-to-one um, our -one or our gluten-free all-purpose flour, but we also have a fantastic pizza crust mix. And that also makes an excellent uh, cinnamon roll. We have the recipe right on the package. Bob's going to grab it. There you go. Just happened to have it. Yep, and if you turn around to the back, there's a recipe for gluten-free cinnamon rolls. And of course, if you have other allergies, you can always substitute. You don't need to necessarily use butter. You could use um, some vegan margarine. You could use coconut oil. But they're quick. They're easy. You know, they're not a super messy recipe. They're not very involved. And it's a great thing to just pop out of the oven on Thanksgiving morning, the next day, Christmas morning. And I noticed, too, there's two things about this. Of course, it has our gluten-free stamp on it, which means mm -hmm. that we've tested this and it is gluten-free. But it also has the whole grain. It, uh, it, it's made with whole grain ingredients. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't you just read a couple of those off? Yeah, we have whole grain uh, rice, brown rice flour, whole grain millet flour, whole grain sorghum flour. All these grains are milled on our slow-turning uh, steel uh, mills, that uh, stone mills that make them. Yeah, so you can pretty much rest assured that with any Bob's Red Mill product you're going to buy, whether it's a flour or it's a mix, you're going to be getting a lot of whole grains. And as you were talking about earlier, that's one of the things that we're kind of missing out on these days are our whole grains. Well, not anymore. We even have gluten-free granolas. Now. That's right. And yeah. they are because tasty. granolas are pretty fundamentally uh, made from uh, from oats, uh, rolled oats. Why? Because we, we, we made our contracts with the rolled oat. Mm -hmm. Uh, suppliers now we were able to make the granolas so we have some wonderful I think we had two or three very nice uh, gluten-free uh, granolas and they're selling very well yeah. all over yeah. the world and we also have a gluten-free muesli mm -hmm. and uh, we also have an eight grain uh, a gluten-free eight grains we've taken all the grains that mm -hmm. uh, that have uh, that are gluten-free all well there's more than eight perhaps but we've we've ground them very coarsely they're made right here on the stone mills, and uh, we have a wonderful eight grain hot cereal. This is so good. Sarah. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to change from your oatmeal awesome. every morning, right? Try the gluten. Well, you know, I'm, I we every Monday morning at the meeting, we have a, a staff meeting, and all of us are there, and uh, we report on our past week, and we all enjoy. But we have also to the company. Yes, Bob treats us to breakfast every Monday morning. <laughs> one of the cereals, and this is one of our favorites. Yeah, that is definitely Wonderful. a very good one. Wonderful. 
Oh, and on the why don't you talk a little on her website? Sure, with yeah. All these recipes. So uh, we have a great recipe website uh, on our uh, at bobsredmill.com. You're going to be able to find recipes for everything. It's not you know not necessarily even going to be just gluten free. If you have friends coming that are looking for a wee bread recipe, we're going to have that. Um, I think it's fun to browse. So. It is fun to browse, yeah. and we are in the process right now of revamping it. We're going to add a ton of new recipes. We are getting photographs of a lot of stuff. The gingerbread cookie recipe will be on there. Uh, it's a great place to go. It's a good resource in case you need any sort of ideas for, uh, you know, a general recipe. And there are a ton of Thanksgiving recipes on there. You're going to find stuffing recipes. You're going to find treat recipes, pies, cakes, cookies. Apple pie. Apple pie will definitely be on there. Good. Using both our gluten-free pie crust mix and using some traditional pie crust. I think it's well. wonderful. Mm -hmm. I've come a long way. We sure have. <clears throat> Well, you know, I've been making these crazy videos I where know. I tell people how to cook and, and what to do with these. And so somebody thought that was a good idea to photograph them all. And so we have, I don't know how many now. Eight? 80. 80. Oh, we have 80. <laughs> we have 80 videos telling you how to do things. Sarah's in some of these. Nancy's in some of these. Amanda's in some of these. You're even in some of them. I'm even in some of them, probably 90% of them. <laughs> anyway, I'm telling you how to cook stuff and why you should be eating things. And so we'd love to invite you to come to our website and look up the uh, the videos on the various products and whatnot. And you can find those on our YouTube channel. You can go directly to YouTube, or you can visit our website, or you can go to our blog, and that will take you to that YouTube channel. And I also want to say our blog is another excellent resource for recipes. Uh, we curate a ton of recipes. We have a lot of guest bloggers that will write posts, especially for us. And a lot of them will focus on gluten-free, vegan, uh, and you know any sort of food allergy you can think of. Um, and it's all focused on healthy eating. I think if you look around, there's a dollar off coupon. There might a lot be. of things too. There might be from our website. That's right. <laughs> you can download a dollar off. <laughs> <laughs> we want you to buy it. <laughs> well, I think we're about run out of steam here. Okay. So I don't know how my, how we are for time, Sarah, but uh, I think we've uh, probably answered a lot of questions. I think we've answered a lot of questions. Were, there, I think we've shared a lot questions. of great ideas. Thanks. And yeah. I hope we can do this again. This sure. has just been a great pleasure. Yes. Well, my pleasure. Thanks. And thanks to all our viewers and moms. Uh, meet. Uh, meeting members for joining us today and we wish you all a happy holiday season from all of us at Bob's Red Mill to your, your good, good health, health. <laughs> thank you uh, that's Bye. wonderful yeah.